Uh, but what I'm going to talk to you about today is um, municipal ordinances, how to issue citations, and then how to actually follow through and prosecute them. When I did this the first time, we had a municipality who was issuing citations, but they didn't have any way to enforce it. So citations were going out. People weren't even sure exactly where to pay the citations, and there was no way to enforce it once they issued them because there was no court backing whatsoever. So it was sort of a sort of like sending an angry warning with no teeth of whatsoever was what was going on. And so the kind of citations we're talking about are nuisances within your community, right? So this isn't something that you would call the police on that's an emergency. This is something that your community wants to enforce to make sure that it's a place that people want to live. So noise violations, um, animal issues, uh, when you have members of the community that don't mow their lawn and they're this high, um, so those are the kinds of things that we're talking about. And how many of you in here have local law enforcement? Hands? How many of you rely on the county sheriff to do any criminal sorts of enforcement for you? Okay. So for those of you who, particularly those who rely on sheriff's department, you are more likely to be in a situation where you don't have any place to enforce any ordinances that you've drafted as a community. Um, and so the first thing that you need to do then is either on occasion you can sort of join up with another municipal court um, or you can go through the county, the circuit court in whatever county that you're in. In order to do that, you have to have what's called a citation ordinance itself. So that's an ordinance that gives you the ability to write citations and to issue them. Um, and that is available to you under Wisconsin Statute 66.0113. So that's the statute under which you have the authority to issue citations. So you need to draft that ordinance first. And in that ordinance, you have to decide who can issue the citations. And this is all information that once it's decided, gets sent over to the clerk of court in whatever county that you're in. So first, who can draft and issue the citations? Town board members are the most commonly used, partly because they're most invested. For the most part, they're very involved in their communities, their small communities, they're in there and they're seeing what's going on. So town board members, um, the sheriff's department is allowed to issue citations, a zoning commissioner or a fire commissioner. So in the ordinance itself, you need to designate who that's going to be. They also need to be assigned an ID number at some point because that's what's put on the citation itself in case there's any question about who issued them. Um, we'll get into enforcing the ordinance and collecting the forfeitures later. Um, so is there a municipal court available? If not, then you need to set up with the county clerk. Um, clerks are amazing resources for this. They're probably better than any attorney, and I shouldn't say that for my own job security, but clerks deal with this all the time. They set up municipalities, they help people get into court, they tell you all the technical things, but the first thing you need to do is draft that ordinance, uh, ordinance or citation ordinance, then get the information to the clerk about every ordinance that you would like to enforce. So if you have a noise ordinance and a dog ordinance and maybe even a disorderly conduct ordinance, um, certain municipalities have ordinance levels that there is also a state crime for, but this is a lower penalty, and then that money comes into their community as opposed to going to the state. Somerset's a really good example of that. They have an OWI ordinance, and they can prosecute those through the Somerset Municipal Court, and then that money goes to Somerset as opposed to the state. Um, so you have to give a copy of all of the ordinances to the clerk of court at one time. As you draft new ones, you keep them updated because that's where the judges get to see if you have to go to trial, what has to be proven, um, what the actual violations are. Um, you identify the authorized individuals. And then very importantly is when you're drafting your ordinance, you're going to say this is what the fine, it's actually a forfeiture if it's a civil matter, this is how much it's going to be. So if you don't, if your lawn is over 12 inches high, you have to pay a forfeiture of $100. And you can do that for each day that your lawn is over that length high. But you can't put that amount on the citation because you have to include court costs. So for every county, you can get that online and they have a table of costs. So for a $5 forfeiture, you actually have to write $143.50 if you're in Barron County because that's the rest of the fees that are included in going through the court system. 
You may think those fees are ridiculous, and some of them seem ridiculous to me too. Um, but they include things like, let's see, for non-criminal fees, you pay a clerk's fee, you pay a penalty surcharge, you pay a jail surcharge, although no one can ever go to jail for violating an ordinance, so go figure. Um, crime lab and drug testing um, and court support. Those are all fees that are included and that you have to include on your ordinance or on your citation when you send it out. If you decide that you're going to issue a citation um, and you go all the way through and, and you're going to prosecute and you reach an agreement with that person ahead of time, just get it done. We don't care. We just want the lawn cleaned up. We just want your dog to stop barking. Um, you still have to pay a $5 fee to the clerk of court in most counties, so you're not going to get the $5 back no matter what. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Then the other thing is very often county courts, circuit courts, have certain days of the month and certain times only where they're limited to prosecuting um, civil forfeitures, so municipal ordinances. So check with them, and then when you draft the citation, you pick the court date and you tell them when notice is. There isn't a particular requirement um, in a lot of the municipal ordinances about how much time you have to give them, um, but no less than 10 days is a good rule. So this starts when you receive a complaint from either a member of your community, someone on the board notices. Have any of you received complaints within the community that you just didn't know what to do about or how to make it stop? Anybody? All right. Thanks, Dale. Um, <laughs> so first you get the complaint. There needs to be an initial investigation. And if you're going to be prosecuting this, you have to th think like an investigator. So you have to start documenting what's going on right away. Um, you have to notify the source of the nuisance. And one of the things that's very important to put in your ordinances is how are, how are the alleged offenders going to receive their notice? Um, it may be a good idea to put that in the citation ordinance itself. It says for all citations, this is when we're going to do that. But that's not necessarily a requirement. You could put it in each ordinance. So first, we're going to send a letter. Then we're going to have a public hearing where that person is allowed to appear and refute this. Um, and then we're going to decide whether or not we're going to issue a citation. Um, deciding whether or not to proceed is actually a pretty big decision because these are not money makers for Morse counties. If that's what the thought process is, is we're going to issue fine or forfeitures and we're going to bring some money in, it's not going to work that way in most cases. It's going to cost you at least as much to prosecute these if it goes all the way through as you're getting for a forfeiture. So just sort of wipe that from your brain. This is not a money maker. And so that's a very real decision for a lot of uh, village boards is, is it worth it? Is this annoying enough at this point that we want to spend the money? Um, because once you do, you need to have an attorney that takes that to court. So um, I represent some municipalities in court. I receive a complaint from them about something going on. There are citation booklets that you can order from the state, so you don't have to recreate the wheel on all of these. There are citation booklets. You list what ordinance number it's under. You list the name of the offender. If you would like assistance from the court in collecting that, you also should try to find that person's driver's license number and put it on there, because that allows the court to have some access to them. Um, you have to list the violated ordinance itself, the date of violation. That can be a time frame. So if this is a situation where they're in violation on this day, but if they don't clean it up by the next day, they can get a daily citation for the whole time. It might be a span of two weeks, and you would list the entire period. And then in the forfeiture amount you're asking for, if it's $100 a day, you're asking for $1,000, right? But you're also asking for the court costs on top of that. So it can get to a pretty big amount pretty quickly. Um, <clears throat> you need to note the date of appearance and the appearance requirement. So for some, you don't necessarily have to appear if you're going to pay it ahead of time. But people should know that if they don't show up for court, the circuit court judge can find them guilty in default. So if they don't show up and they don't send any notice, any not guilty plea by mail, then they can be found guilty in default. So most of the citations are going to be either traffic citations, uh, non-traffic citations that are dealing with community nuisances, or uh, issues involving minors. Um, 
when you're deciding what notice or how you're going to deliver those citations, some thought actually needs to be put in this. So if you say, for instance, we're going to send out this notice and this person has 10 days to respond. This is a nitpicky lawyer thing, but 10 days from what? 10 days from the date they receive the notice, 10 days from the day you mail the notice, and if you're going to have 10 days from the date they receive the notice, how are you going to know when they receive it? So you need to send it appropriately so that you can document that because it has been a very real issue. Um, personal service is probably the least used. Um, for the most part, you don't want to be the person delivering that notice. It's just not a very fun thing to do. Um, but it's, that it's also easier to just do it by mail and to know the date that you sent it or sent it by certified mail when you have a date that they can get back to you letting you know when they received it. If you decide to go to court, then someone like me would get your citation, would contact the court. There's always an initial appearance date, and on that date, the attorney would be there, um, and hopefully the defendant would be there. If they're not, like I said before, they can get found uh, guilty in default. Then they can either, if they appear, they can plead not guilty. Ooh. They can plead not guilty, they can plead uh, guilty and just pay the forfeiture, um, and they can either try to settle something with you in between there or the court sets it for a trial. If the court sets it for a trial, then you have to make sure that you have witnesses that are available for the prosecuting attorney to call, that they've documented things, that they haven't just taken pictures but they have the dates on them and they're marked, because what we're going to need to do is establish that on the dates that are on the citation, this is what the issue was. So if you take pictures in June and you send this in and you don't have the dates marked or you don't have someone who can testify these are the dates that I did it, you're going to have a very difficult time proving that the dates listed on the citation were an accurate timing. Okay? Um, the last thing that we talk about is how to collect the forfeitures. Um, some people will just pay them and bless their hearts, but <laughs> a lot of people will not. Um, and so depending on how you draft your ordinances, that can make a big difference. So if you're drafting a lawn ordinance and you say for every day that your lawn is over 12 inches high, you owe us $100, then you are going to be trying to collect that $100 plus the court costs. And I've been asked, okay, can we do this by just putting this on our tax roll? No, you can't. However, there is, is law that says if you are being paid for a service, you can put it on the tax roll. So instead of saying, we're going to issue a citation and you're going to pay me $100 for each of these days, you can say, if your lawn has been over 12 inches high for one week, the village reserves the right to come in and mow your lawn for you for this amount of a fee. So if you are being reimbursed for a service, that could be put on a tax roll, whereas you could not do that just to get a forfeiture paid. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so then the other is, if you have gone and you have a judgment of conviction and they're not paying and you're trying to collect, there, you can also use a collection service or sometimes the court can intercept um, from a tax refund and that is pursuant to a completely different statute um, and that's something that we could get into it at another time, but it's under Wisconsin statutes uh, 71.935 and in that way they can set off a tax refund or they can set up a tax refund by the forfeiture amount. So I'm sure. And I probably was too limited in saying just annoyance things. That would, that would be something that you could draft an ordinance about. It would be, and I kind of said animal issues that would fall under if you aren't able to keep your animal within this much enclosure or they have um, animals at large ordinance kind of things. Normally you think about dogs, but it could certainly be horses or cattle. And so if they are caught off of the property, that would be something appropriate to draft an ordinance for, certainly. Anyone else? No? All right. Thank you very much.